Hi, my name is Lynette and I'm from Hands On Art. Thank you for joining me today. Today we are going to be painting this image right here. I found that on Google. Uh, I'm inspired by this because it looks effective and yet it uses some very simple techniques. The techniques we're looking at today is blending. I'm going to be doing a variation on that image. Now, when you are painting with acrylics is what I'm using, hopefully you'll have some access to acrylics as well, you will need to paint very quickly. You'll see that as I blend, I'm using the wet on wet technique and you will need your primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And then in, dish, in addition to that, you're gonna need black and white. Now, I have gone ahead and I have mixed my yellow and red and a bit of white to create this peachy color. And then I've also mixed a bit of white and red to, to create this pink color. Now, go ahead and mix your colors. Just be mindful that because it's acrylic, it'll quickly dry. So this is probably starting to dry as I'm speaking. In addition to that, you're going to need a couple of paintbrushes. You're going to need a few flats. I have the large, I have a couple mediums, and I have a filbert, but you can use a small flat as well. The magic of flats and a filbert is also that they have a fine thin side and a flat larger face. So you get two sizes in one. We're going to start with the white and the large brush. Um, so make sure your brush is wet, wipe off the excess water and dip in white. We're going to be starting at three quarters of the way down and we're just going to paint a bit of white down first. So go ahead, spread a bit of white, just a strip. You can see it's, a, you can't see that too well, but it's about this thick there. Um, if you're having trouble spreading that white paint, add a bit of water. Earlier on, I mixed a bit of orange together with a bit of white to create a peach and I mixed a bit of red with a bit of white to create a light pink. Now orange, you create orange by mixing yellow and red together and then a bit of white to get that peach there. I'm going to get that peach colour and I'm going to start to blend it in to the white on either side and I'm going to leave a bit of white in the middle. I'm not going to go too far into that section. And I'm painting horizontally. Now this brush is starting to get loaded with that colour and I'm starting to blend away that white and I don't want to get rid of it completely. So now I'm going to get another brush. I'm going to wet this brush and I'm going to use it to blend every now and then. Okay. Now I'm satisfied with how that peach color is blending into the white. You have some areas that are more intense and dark. Now I'm going to add maybe a little bit of yellow to the tip of my brush and add some streaks of yellow every now and then and I'm using my blending brush to blend gently and I believe that maybe I need to clean my blending brush off wipe it on the rag and then I can blend a bit more effectively without dominating that light area in the center there if that light area is disappearing add more white okay I'm satisfied with that I'm going to move on from the orange to the pink. Now I mentioned that I mixed a bit of pink together with red and um, a bit of white. So go ahead and add that gorgeous light pink. It's kind of like a gorgeous blend that you would see in a frangipani. So inspired by nature, these typically beautiful sunset colours or colours that we see in flowers such as frangipanis, just blending that through. And naturally, this transitions from 
um, yellow to orange to pink into purple. We're going to start to add some blue. I'm going to add a little bit more of that pink. Oh, suddenly transitioned into orange. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of orange left on your paintbrush. Make sure you clean it off. It's not too bad to have a bit of variation every now and then. But just so that you um, are able to control the colors a bit better, make sure that you do have your water handy and that rag. I'm using that rag just to dry my paintbrush off into it or I can just wipe some of that off there. Now, I'm gonna start by adding the blue just up here. You see, I'm leaving a white space there and you'll see in a second why I'm doing that. So I'll just do this half here. So I've done only half of the canvas with that blue. Now I'm gonna mix that blue in with a bit of that pink that I created earlier. And it's gonna create a really beautiful lavender color. And I'm gonna get my blending brush, my blending brush here. I'm gonna clean that off because it still has peach, a bit of peach orange on it. If I mix orange with blue, I'll get brown. And I don't want brown in my sunset. I want it to transition beautifully and naturally. Now, I've just um, noticed I'm doing a little something quite naturally that comes to me. I've added large chunks of colour here. Now, I know in my head, with my experience with acrylic, that this acrylic is not fully dry. Now, in order to blend this pink in with this yellow, I'm going to have to use a bit of water. So, I've got my paintbrush. I'm going to put some water on it. Okay? It's nice and wet. And then I just wipe it off a little bit, just a little bit, just a dab. And then... I use that water just to help blend. And if I've got excess water, just wipe it away. I've created another kind of purple that I'm going to mix through with that blue a little bit. because I don't want it to transition into blue too quickly. Now, again, that's your choice. Whatever is your taste, you decide what you want to do, where you want the blue to go, how much of that blue you want, whether you want it to stay purple for a little um, longer. Now, I'm struggling with that medium brush, so I'm gonna go back to the large. Now this large brush holds a lot of water, so always making sure that I get rid of that water. Now I'm starting to add the darker colours. Um, Night time is encroaching from the top down, and you see the sun is setting here. I'm going to add some more of those darker blues up here. I'm going to add the cyan just purely by itself. And now this is where the black starts to come in from the corners. Um, I know that many artists might say that they don't use black because artists don't use black. But this is a beginner's course and you can use black because I'm using black. So don't worry about that. Now I'm going to start using the black. I'm going to use it first of all in the corners, this is my black area here, and then maybe a bit at the top. Now I've got that white area here, that's my blend from blue to black. I'm going to add a bit of water to my brush. So I've got that water on there. The black's still on there, now I'm going to mix the black with the blue a little bit. and. Uh, I'm going to blend in with that mixed black and blue. Now, you might notice some streaks that you don't like on your canvas. Um, the streaks occur if you have too much water on your brush or not enough paint. 
So they're occurring because of the lack of pigment. They might also occur if you've chosen to paint with a board that has a glossy surface. That means that the paint really doesn't have anything to grip on. That's why it's preferable to use a thick card or a canvas. Okay, so now I've completed my background. Um, just the basic colors for my background. You can see a transition occurring there. And I'm pretty satisfied with it. You can see that I've used horizontal strokes. That's very important. Now I've continued um, rubbing my paintbrush over very gently any areas that have streaks because sometimes when the paint is still wet, it's moving around, it has um, less viscosity, so it doesn't have that much pigment in it if you're using a lighter amount of pigment. And some areas with more water will streak. So just waiting maybe just 30 seconds and then going over it again in that same um, direction, horizontal direction and stroke you can then smooth over some of those streaks. Now, we are going to paint some clouds. Um, you're going to need more white, and white is pretty important. It ends up being the largest tube. Here's my black, here's my white. So white's one of the most important paints that you'll use when painting. Um, I'm going to use a medium flat. So I'm gonna get my medium flat. I always like to have two brushes at me, on me at the same time. Um, so here's my medium flat. I've wiped it off a little bit and here's my white. Now I'm going to dip just like the tip of it in that white and then I'm going to start to create cloud formation. So I'm going to come in from the side and move inwards. And I'm going to do it in this blobbing circular, you can see that, circular kind of movement just like that it's not done yet now I've got my second brush the second brush is very important I'm gonna wet that brush so now that brush is wet and I'm going to blend the bottom down just a little bit go back with the white blend that in Okay, now I've got the main forms of my clouds and I'm going to add some details to them. Now I'm going to go over with a bit of white and just highlight some areas. And I'm using a downward stroke like this, so it's just like this. If you were a kid and you ever practiced, when you were a kid, of course you are all children at one point, but when you were a kid and you practiced running writing, you go like that. That's the same kind of looping movement that you're creating. And I'm just going to do that at the top and the bottom of my clouds, as you go into the lower section of your cloud, it's going to get darker. The reason being is that that white light is actually coming from the moon and the moon is going to be here for me. So the moon's at the top and it's shining its lunar light upon these clouds, at the top of these clouds. And the sun, the sun's still shining light on these clouds, but it's a different colored light. You can see it's gonna be orange or pink at the bottom of these clouds. Now, to add that detail, you need a clean brush. So I'm gonna clean one of my brushes off. You may want to use your smaller flat for this one or your filbert and you're going to find that peach on your um, palette have a little bit of it left and you're going to add a little bit of peach to the bottom of these clouds they're being lit from the bottom from that sunset and it adds just a little bit more dimension to those clouds going to add a bit more there. I'm actually going to add a bit of peach to that one because I feel like that light could be reflecting onto this cloud here. So the peach, the pink peach rather than the orange 
say the pink, the light pink colour, just lightly add it there. Now if you want to paint something very lightly, you either have to add a lot of water to that brush and then dip it in, so then you get a translucent colour. But there's another technique that's called scumbling. So scumbling is another technique, I'll show you in a second. This is just with the light bit of water, uh, watered down paint. Now scumbling is a different technique, I might do a bit of that pink there. Um, scumbling requires you to use a bit of that wet paint, pink, but only a little bit. And then you have to rub it off onto a surface, might be a bit of paper, so only have a little bit. It's like you're dusting your cheeks with rouge. Now, this is going to go onto this piece of, uh, this area here, and this, this is actually dry. So scumbling is a bit of wet, it's not too wet, on dry paint. This is the dry paint, and what I'm adding is the wet paint. Now, the reason why it's effective is because there's not much on my brush. Now we're going to do the moon. Um, my moon is going to be a semi moon, uh, sem sorry, <laughs> semi circle, therefore it's a crescent moon. Um, you can decide to do a whole moon, whatever you want, large, small, you can choose to make it a little bit yellow. I'm just going to do mine white, so nice and simple. I do a semicircle, just like that. And I'm using my small um, filbert, and with just a small amount of paint, I've painted a semicircle. I'm not done, so I'm going to continue. Just with, I'm not going to add more paint. I'm going to continue with what I have here, and then I'm going to blend it through using that scumbling technique I mentioned before. How does that look? That looks all right. Okay, so I've done my clouds, my moon, my background, now I'm ready for my pines. Now, you're gonna use your small, and for the pines, it doesn't matter if you're doing pines or any other trees, it's good to have variation in size. So. For the pines, I'm going to create vertical um, lines, but I'm going to start in the center and they're going to start off small and slowly they're going to get bigger and bigger. So taller and taller and taller. Um, that's to help create variation and it's also used to draw the viewer's eye into the centerpiece of the artwork. Um, I suggest use variation of size to create depth. And uh, it also helps create interest in the artwork, so it makes it interesting. Um, now using a bit of black paint on your fine brush, go ahead and start to paint some vertical lines. Now they don't have to be, they don't have to be absolutely straight. One pine might be swaying in the wind. Some others might be straight. Um, I've decided to give that one a bit of character. Let's see how that goes. And if you're feeling like your black is not applying well, a top tip is that you add a bit of water first and then mix it with the black. So that helps lubricate the paint and then you'll get a nice application there. Okay, so once you've done your main pine shapes, then you start to just paint in the bottoms there because usually the pines are really thick down the bottom, so you won't be able to see through them. It should be a dense forest. So 
So I'm going to use my um, my large flat brush. Make sure that that is not too wet. Okay, now with this, I now need to add some highlights. So we have some um, light coming from behind from the moon as well as the sun. So if you choose to use yellow or white, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do, I believe, white streaks. So you can use yellow. Yellow will have a nice effect as well. So I'm getting my smallest brush my small flat or small filbert and then I'm going to highlight just with a little bit of white I'm actually going to water this white down so I'm going to add a bit of water so it's not too opaque it's a bit translucent and then I'm going to add some highlights just to the edges here and there not too much just here and there When you're doing some highlighting in the lower areas, just remember where the pine um, body is so you can work outwards from that point. Just so that you're not doing random streaks everywhere, that it's staying within that trunk of the pine, that you're doing your streaks outwards, streaking outwards like you did when you were doing your black. Keep adding some highlights at the bottom here. That'll help give the artwork more dimension um, because you are suggesting that regardless, there is, um, there is still moonlight hitting some of these areas. Now you're seeing me wipe away some of that because as you get lower, the highlights will become less and less obvious due to the shadows therefore you need to be highlighting with more of a gray or you need to be adding more water um, to your paint as you highlight or in my case you can just blend and wipe with your finger i i'm the kind of artist who really enjoys getting paint on her fingers i feel like it's a part of the process but of course if you can have the same effect just by adding a bit more water to your paintbrush and less paint okay now the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add some stars now you get the back of your paintbrush you get some of that white and you start dotting through just in the night sky and again variety is really important the stars that you see in the sky they're not all the same size so make sure you add some smaller dots and larger dots as well add some clusters try not to create any pattern make sure you're using variation that stars in the night sky really aren't too predictable. Now, if you feel like I don't really like one of those stars, I've made a mistake there. Make sure that you identify the color that's in the background that you, luckily for, my, for me, mine is the black. I just paint over it and erase that star. If it's a blue, I want to get rid of this star. So that's a blue with a bit of black. I make that color as close to it as possible. And I erase just by painting over that star. Okay, now I want to create a radiant glow around my moon. Um, you're going to use your medium or small brush. 
and you're going to use the scumbling technique and then you will be done. So a bit of white, only the tiniest little bit, only a little bit. Wipe it off on your um, rag if you need to and then test that out. See what it looks like. I'm doing curves around the moon. And this is also why you probably shouldn't use paper because if you're using a dry brush technique you'll be lifting up and peeling the paper. Okay. There you go. Alright. I'm going to add a few more highlights and then I'm done. Highlights to the moon. Re-emphasize that moon. Highlights to my clouds. Just the very tops because they're being lit by the moon. Using nice, beautiful, fluffy curves. And I'm done. So, how did yours turn out? I hope it turned out well. I hope you've had fun and I hope you learned a few things about blending. Um, how to do wet on wet blending. Now remember a few very important notes is that acrylic dries quickly. Make sure that you work quickly with wet paint to blend wet paint into wet paint. If it does dry, you can try the scumbling technique. The scumbling technique is what we used on the moon. We used um, some of it on the clouds as well, on this cloud here. If you remember back, we needed the wet, the paint to be wet on the can, uh, sorry, dry. It needed to be dry on the canvas and then a tiny little bit dusted onto your paintbrush. So then you can rub it into the, um, the paint that you're applying it to. So then you can create a light blend. We did that just then with the aura of the moon um, and uh, the other thing that we did is we created contrast with the background. Um, so the background was light going into dark creating that sunset effect and then these pines were silhouetted. Now they needed to be a darker colour. You could, you could also use a deep dark green by mixing yellow and blue and black together if you want it to have a bit more dimension. You can go ahead and add some more streaks of those colors if you want. We highlighted at the end using white, going over the sections that would be touched by the moonlight of the clouds um, and also of the pines there. Then we added some stars with the back of our paintbrush. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've had fun and keep painting. <laughs>